okay, why we wait for others to drop their own and what they learned and what they gleaned from the last meeting? I feel like I'm just going to express mine. And when Brother Adi was, should I say, teaching, as I say, when he was teaching and he was referring to the flesh, and you know, one of the things we dwelt on in the last teaching was that, you know, a lot of us, when we first give our lives to Christ, when we first experience salvation, and maybe a few weeks after, we still see ourselves doing some things that we know that this new person, this new being that we are in Christ should not be doing, or experiencing some struggles, either with our flesh, with our tongue, that we, we feel after salvation, we shouldn't experience it. And then some of us actually still we now start to begin begin to doubt whether oh was this salvation total why am I still battling with this why am I still battling with this and one of the scriptures that um brother I did mention that nails it in for us that regardless of what okay but Mando has dropped something regardless of what we are passing through the struggles we are passing through you must remember like it is said in Colossians two fourteen that the Lord has cancelled out the certificate of debt consisting of legal documents which were in force against us and which were hostile to us and this certificate that former certificate before we came into Christ has been set aside and completely removed by nailing it to the cross so one of the awareness we must carry as believers as children of God is that regardless of what we are battling it has been nailed to the cross it may have not manifested physically in the form of oh I no longer do this I no longer do this but that carrying that consciousness and that awareness that I can no longer battle with masturbation. I can no longer battle with lust. I can no longer battle with inordinate affections because that certificate that was written on with my name and these struggles has been nailed to the cross. And you know, that's part of the transformation, transformative deliverance from our flesh. Even after salvation, your mindset must be transformed with this scripture, knowing that whatever it is now, that you are battling with, that you are still seeing manifesting as an experience in your life, even as a believer. I don't know if you would write this out as a confession to say that it has been nailed to the cross, so it cannot find expression in you any longer. Whether it is anger, you easily get angry, you easily flare up, whatever it is, it has been nailed to the cross. So carry that consciousness and that awareness, even as we live for God in school, outside of school, anywhere that you are. So that was what stood out for me in the last meeting. So let me just read out that from Gray Bukumamidu. So Daddy actually made mention of the need to allow the spirit man lead, yes, and working on our personality, enhancing the beautiful ones and working on the weak ones. Yes, this also brings to mind um, something that he said. He said, whatever we call as weakness, whatever you and I referred to as weaknesses in our personality, in our flesh, are things that when we enter, when we come into Christ experientially, when we come into Christ through salvation, God does not necessarily need to cancel those things, those weaknesses, or completely remove them from you. Because when you come into Christ, he now strengthens those weaknesses. In fact, what you call a weakness may actually be a talent. Now, what stood out for our author in person of Raya Dele Popola, what he mentioned then was that um, what he battled with was talkativeness, talking too much everywhere you went. People said, ah, I, oh, you talk too much, you do this. And for him, it stood out as a weakness. But when he came into the experience of salvation and his walk with God, God turned that weakness, well, that thing he called the weakness, into a tool, into a talent, into something God could use to bring others into into God as well. So I trust God that tonight as we move forward with uh, uh, our review, that God himself will minister to us whatever thing you see as a weakness, as something that dims your light, that does not allow you to shine, that makes you too different from other people. Um, God will turn into a tool of power in the name of Jesus. I believe our uh, Speaker is ready. Yes, good evening, ma. Good morning, ma. Good evening, sir. 
um, good evening, Powerful. good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, ma. It's such um honor to be here, and it's a privilege I do not take for granted at all. I I, I count it um, a serious one as that, actually, and I do not take it for granted. Thank you, Chief Postma. God bless and increase you, man. Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, Amen. I, I, really, I don't know how to begin, but um, I will start from somewhere as the Lord grants me grace. I want to also recognize the presence of our fathers, and we have especially our father, Dabi Ayuade. Good evening, sir. Thank you for last, last um, Saturday, last two Saturdays, it was a blessing, really. God bless and increase you greatly, sir. In Jesus' name. The journey, Muslim School, a spiritual institution. I must confess, when I began my reading, reading of this material, it was like um, I was entering into a fresh moment of encounters. In fact, it started from the forward. I was written by our fathers in the Lord, Reverend Urusha Gunsalako and um, Reverend Tony Ogwebo. You know, it, um, the forward the loan was inspiring. So it made me look forward to something large. And of course, I was not disappointed. I earlier discovered something while I was um, reading the book that letter really kills, but it's the spirit that gives life. There is a measure of the spirit of God that can rest upon a note. Now, when I mean a note, note now it can be a letter or a sound. And when the spirit of the Lord rests upon this note, as in letter now or a sound, the spirit finds expression in that note, and there is a free flow of the very essence of God as the Lord desires in that territory. Such is this book. As I was reading it, I was literally entering into the encounter that our friend and brother, of course, the prince, you know, came into, and it was a, it was so much ignition for me. I tell you, so much ignition. In fact, as I was reading the book, I had to pause and pray, check my Bible again, right? I was like, ah, ah, what is ah, this is massive, you know, over and again. And I, I want to celebrate God in the life of. The author, the Lord, will continually bless and increase you, sir, in the name of the Lord Jesus. We celebrate and honor you, sir. God bless you, sir. So, by the message of the Lord, looking forward, we'll be reviewing chapter three of this spiritual material. And in this chapter, we'll be considering about four major headings laboring the word and prayer, staying in the secret place. The neuropsychiatric posting experience. I'm really looking forward to that particular place, really. And on return and life outside campus, I would like us to really stay because I believe God is actually doing, going to do something this night that will cause us to shift. I guess that we will experience a major shift in our work with God in everything that concerns our space, a major shift. So we begin in the name of the Lord. Earlier in the book, this chapter three, the author started with, uh, you know, by the message of the Lord, I will be giving so much credence and, you know, reference to the author to, you know, to make the review. Now, laboring in the word and prayer. Now, earlier in this um, chapter, the author made reference to the potency of the word of God, you know, and he made reference to the potency in the sense that it is this word that was responsible for creating the world, W W O R L D. So, in that sense, the word of the Lord, if not the most powerful thing in the space of a Christian, it will be what is holding the hand of the most powerful thing. Because in the creation of the creature, in the birthing of the world, the word of God was on the scene. And it made me, she made us understand that in our age and time, the reason why it appears as though we are not seeing much of God is because we are taking lightly that which we needed to take heavily. Hebrews 4.12 made us understand that the word of the Lord, of course, is like a double-edged sword, powerful, sharp, 
that any 12 years old, it cuts and divides to the bones and marrow, granting judgment and ordination even to matter, is as powerful as that. In this sense, nothing really can be created in the world of a believer outside of the world. One thing we must be careful of doing, especially in our age and time, is not to fall in the danger of taking lightly that which we're supposed to take heavily. If you remember when, <laughs> thank you, Father, when the Nehemiah was building and the steam were building the, the wall, the broken wall, Scripture made us understand at a point at, in building, one hand was holding the instrument of building, another hand was holding the sword. The sword in our contemporary age now can be can literally be compared or can be in the similitude of the world. In the building of our life, we cannot do outside of the world. Principle is a fact. The place of the world cannot be thrown aside or swept under the carpet. Woe to betide a man that does not have the word of the Lord for now in his faith, because such man, his end will not be far. Ah, his end will not be far. Looking forward, so in this book, we were made to understand that if you give yourself to the world, you will become a wonder in your world. Looking critically to Acts chapter 6 and verse 4, Scripture made us understand of the Acts of the Apostles. He said, and they gave themselves to the to prayer and to the ministry of the word. <laughs> little did they be little. No wonder they became a wonder in their generation. I used to say, till today, we are still making reference to them. Till today, till today, because they gave themselves only to the word. So there's a place of understanding and knowing the word. There's a place of giving, giving yourself only to it. It is men and women that have given themselves only to the world that becomes a wonder to their world. When we give ourselves only to this world, we become a wonder to our world. And what makes us a wonder? What makes us a wonder is that we, our vessels become literal. The, 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 our vessels are the, 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 the dimensions of the Lord find expression within our vessels. And when men begin to see us, they'll be like, this one has been with the Lord. Giving ourselves to the world. Giving ourselves to the world. Scripture made us understand every day of our living, not outside the instrumentality of the word, the word of God. Scripture made us understand in John chapter 1 and verse 1, that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And that same word was God. Verse 3 now makes us understand, it said there was nothing created outside, there was nothing created by, there was nothing created Outside of the world that has that is still that, that that is still in existence, the world breaks the world. It's as powerful as that. Now, looking forward, we're made to understand that passion for the world. <laughs> thank you, Father. Passion for the world, you know, is something that um, is more like a fuel. It keeps us going. It keeps us, it keeps us, it, the uncle cited an example where when he wants to go to class, <laughs> when he's going to class to read, after packing all of his textbooks to go and read, he will see how the Bible. Now today is a wonder to our world. Obviously, after packing the anatomy, Bruna and Sudat and all of those things, he will see how the Bible. In fact, before he begins to read his book, he would have first taken a portion of the word of God you know, capture that and from the strength that will be gathered from that, make progress in his reading. And I need not to tell you the product or the produce of that kind of reading. Because scripture made us understand, said in the beginning, God, everything that is started with God has been financed, has been financed by the economy that has, that is resident in God. In the beginning, God. So if it started upon the premise of God, we can be sure that God will actually sustain it. The portion. So this person actually kept the other so much so that even he could no longer do ah thank you father he could no longer do outside of the world. I for one have always known the author to be an ardent an ardent student of the world. Ah Kai. God is helping the prince. I remember when I was privileged, you know, to stay with him a couple of 
times before resumption of school. Sometime before I'm awake, you will be on that is table and chair with this one that is big Bible and small Bible and is and a notepad reading. I'm like this brother. <laughs> what is and before you know it, he I say so. A dead student of the world. And now that was because there is something that was actually fanning that into flame. It's a wonder to us today. And same applies to anyone. There's no one that actually gives himself to this word of the Lord that ends up as a non-entity in their time and space. There is nobody. There is there is nobody. There is nobody. So I speak to everyone today that I see trying, that I see taking lightly the word of the Lord. It is because you've not come to understand there are wonders in the world, and men that give themselves to the world end up becoming wonders in their age and time. I pray for someone tonight, you will become a wonder even to this age, to this generation, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Mm. Very, very important. We cannot do much without the outside of the world. It is that powerful, especially as believers. It is our instrument of war, it is our it is it is it is what builds us it is what allow possibility to be made to to find expression even in our space yes you know looking forward the author also made mention of where he went he goes to um <laughs> ah thank you father those days when he actually goes to the mountain and the only prayer that he prays is god help me god help me to love you yes i remember help me to love you Help me to love you. We are still coming to that. We are gradually coming to that because what we are considering now is the place of the word and of actually of prayer. It's wonder even in this and it's relevant in this age and time. You know, truth be told, we cannot do without another. When I mean the word and the prayer and the, and the word of God, the word of God and prayers to God. Reason as we go, we actually make to take note of it. All right. Now, going forward, the passion that the Lord actually kept burning in the life of this author was so much uh, emphasized that I remember when I was reading the book, he made mention of where they actually used to go to certain mountain, you know, to actually go and pray. And he always have one line prayer. Lord, help me to love you. Lord, help me to love you. Little did he know that the Lord was actually, you know, that word, that prayer actually came to pass. One thing I found out about God, one thing I found out in God, there is no prayer that is a waste. Ah, there is no prayer that is a waste, especially if it is coming from a sincere heart. No matter, even if you actually don't know how to construct it, there is no prayer that is a waste. And I tell you, God answers prayers. Ah, God answers prayer. It's no joke. It's very true. I've seen it over and again. The intricacies of that, the intricacies of that will not explain. Remember, we just go quickly to pray, study, and fasting. While the, while, while the author was in school, he made mention of when he actually had an encounter with um, a fellowship president of his, that he saw the grace of God that was exhuming from the life of this, the life of this person, and he drew closer. And that particular day, she called him and sat him down and he was answering questions answering questions and there was one thing that stood out for him that, that that you know that stood out for him and he said the author made mention of saying that the fellowship president gave him an advice that if you actually want to make progress especially in this kingdom give attention to praying studying and fasting and he said god actually helped him and you know particularly on fridays because the school closed by 1 30 and thereabouts he commits that day in fasting. Now, maybe I need to actually make us understand that fasting is a spiritual discipline of a spiritual discipline in which you are intentional about seeking the face of God. You are intentional about knowing what God is actually saying concerning a situation you are actually taking to his face. And the thing about fasting is that there is nobody that wait on the Lord and waste. You don't wait on the Lord and waste away. You gain weight. In fact, someone said that the best way to run is to wait on the knees because you can be sure it will be an, an, an Elijah level. Look at Elijah. He was waiting. By the time the end of, when our, uh, the, the, the end produce, I'll be the product of our waiting, 
there will be a release from heaven. Some people, it will be a, it will be a hand that will come upon them. Some people, it will be a voice they will hear. For some people, it will be an inspiration of the earth. And upon that inspiration, they can go faster than here, but that can even be running with the best of chariots. Fasting. Having a day, week, intentionally seeking the face of God about one's life. Praying and fasting. People of God, no cap. There are certain matters in our life. It's even written in scripture. Say this kind go not except by prayer and fasting. There are certain matters in our life. That not until we have intentionally closed every other door to wanting to hear the voice of the Lord, there may not be a way out. Truth. 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 I remember when I was in second when I was in um, basic school, then it was um actually had <laughs> quite an interesting period then in school. Because of the bulkiness of our uh, work and all of those things, I remember my break period in school. I think it was 30 minutes or one hour. It was 30 minutes on one hour. Just behind our lecture, our lecture hall, I will be there for that 30 minutes praying, especially on those of our days of fasting. Praying. There's no, there's no excuse that there's no time. If you have, if you give it, if you give it, if you have priority for it, you create time for it. There, there, there's, there's no there's no excuse that you don't have time to pray. You don't have excuse. You you don't have excuse not to. If you have if you give it priority, you give it time. If it's taking a if you're taking a place in your space, you give it time. Because you know you be in class from eight to three days and all that. Break period, convert it to prayer time. Convert it. Con I I converted it so much so that by the time I'm coming out, you know, I sometimes. Truth be told, sometimes I come out weak as though I should have used the time to rest before another lecture. And sometimes I come out with an unusual strength. Most especially, I come out with an, either an assurance that my prayer has been heard or an answer to the prayer or an instruction about what I've actually gone to. See, scripture may not say, it's a day that seeking merely shall find him. If we seek, we will find. It is just scriptures. It is just what is correct. If we seek, God sees how we seek. Maybe the reason why some of us, the reason why we've actually not gotten experience or gotten answers, that day, because the way we are seeking, we are not seeking it as if we really want it. If you want it, you will seek better. If you really want it, you will seek more. If you want it, you will give attention to it. If you want it, you will give attention to actually what makes it work. I pray the Lord will inspire and help us in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, still about fasting. If you remember critically in Luke 4, Peter made us understand. He said, and after Jesus was baptized, he said, and the Spirit of the Lord led him to the wilderness to be tempted. Now, he did not say he led him to actually go and fast and pray. But permit me to say that Jesus understood that if in his age and time, he must be able to if he must be able to overcome the temptation, how be the trials that will come his way, he must give himself to a certain regimen. And scripture made us understand that for the next 40 days, he was praying and fasting in the wilderness. And of course, the tempter came. Imagine he had not been praying and fasting, and when the tempter came, there was no word in his face. One of the things the prayer, prayer and fasting would do was it to it to enlarge our space for the word of the Lord to actually saturate us. So that when the tempter comes, when the time of temptation, when the time of examination comes, there will be a, there will be a, it is written that will be response to whatsoever deceit of uh, deceit and lies of the devil that may actually come our way. Prayer and fasting is as important as that. Many a time, the Holy Spirit might actually inspire you to fast. Don't shrug it off. Because he knows the end from the beginning. He knows what is actually ahead of you. He knows the question that is actually going to be set by life. He knows the question that will actually be set by the tempter that will determine your remaining at a particular spot or your being or, or, or your progress. He knows. So when sometimes we feel like some of us, some, some, sometimes the message of the Lord has helped some of us just the, the spirit will make you just discover you actually have no appetite and you just begin to see something like a body. Don't hurry to go and eat. Find out what is happening. What is happening? It may be a call. It may be a call onto a matter that the Lord is actually looking for a man to body him with. And we found out something about the bodies of the Lord. Every body that the Lord sends to a man is as a blessing at us. There is no body of the Lord that is attended to by a man. That, that that man does not end up being blessed. 
For every body, there is a blessing. So blessed is the man that actually attends to body because such man will not remain the same. Everybody has attached to it a blessing. But some of this body cannot be cannot even be perceived if sometimes we don't give ourselves to these spiritual disciplines. A believer that is not having at least a day in a week to intentionally wait on the Lord in prayer and fasting, such believer in time will not have what it takes to make progress sincerely. And of course, we need not to discuss about types of fasting now. But you see that fasting is a major prerequisite, it's a major requirement. It's something we must give attention to if we must make progress. In fact, it has a way of helping us to pray. It has a way of helping us to realize our weakness. It has a way of helping you to realize where your strength stops and where God's help takes over. It helps you to appreciate the help of God in a man. Come on. Ah. Moment. Oh, thank you, Father. <laughs> Today is no idea of sharing stories, but you know. Ah. As a man journeys, especially in this in this in this, in this um in this regimen, praying, fasting, and studying the word, such man will begin to know God and understand his operations. It is not it is not easy at all. If you give attention to this word study, prayer and fasting. Before you know it, you begin to know God. And blessed is the man, because as you begin to know God, one thing that will actually happen is you also begin to understand yourself. Uncle Dusi sang a song. Um, just to know you more and more. When I know you, I'll find me. No light outside you. No one beside you. I want to know you more and more. When I know you, I'll find me. Mm -hmm. See, the author says something. He said, What keeps a man in the secret place with God is what he has found in what he has found about himself in the world. People of God, the truth is as we begin to find God, we begin to seek after God, pant after God. The thing is, we begin to recognize ourselves. You begin to understand your calling. You begin to understand your purpose. You begin to understand what God has asked you to do. What God has called you to do, because it is written there. Have you not know, excuse me not to understand of Jesus? When he came to the fulfillment of his calling, excuse me that he was not he was not looking for where it was written about him. He went straight to Isaiah. Because it has, it, 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 he has known God, he has, he has fellowship with God, the Father to a point, he understands that which has been written about him. That's what he said. He said, I have come in the volume of book that has been written of me. The people of God, there is something that has been written about you. There is something that has been written about me. Almost now lies on us now to find it. Diligent study, diligent seeking, best discovery. Diligent seeking, diligent finding, diligent study, best discovery. There is no to worry about it. Mm. There must be a digging. I, I was on the street of WhatsApp just recently, and someone said, when, when you start digging, and you start digging, and you find gold, appreciate God for the gold. Keep digging. When you dig deeper, you will find diamond. Appreciate God for the diamond. Keep it. Keep digging. If you dig deeper enough, you still find oil. And if you keep digging, you still find more. So, and for God, God is an ocean of supply. that no amount of our seeking can deplete him. Is that large? Is that large? A God that is in charge of the creation of how many people in the world? Yet for every one of them, there's a unique calling. You know, lack of the understanding of a man's unique calling makes him a makes him makes him a tool in the hand of the enemy. A man that is without purpose become an easy tool for the enemy. He can just use you at any time. If you are yet to actually come to the place of purpose, especially as inspired or as written by the world, you become an easy target. You can be used at any time because you are not doing anything. You are not doing and we must understand that we will not be judged according to what we do, but according to what we have been called to do. You will not be judged by the giftings you have. You will be judged according to what you have been called to do. What it has been written about you to do. So therefore, the purpose has been predetermined. It is now man, the believer's responsibility to search it out diligently. 
it is time for us to go back to the books. It is time for us to go back to the drawing book. There is certain, there are certain things that have been written about us that not until we find out about our our working on earth will not make sense. It is God that makes a man. It is God that causes a man to make sense. Let's make progress. Let's let's go to staying in the secret place. Come, help us, Father. Now we must understand that the reason why the secret place is a place of secret, or the reason why maybe we should define secret place as a place where you enter, a place where you enter into, and you, 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 you find expression. You enter into your element, your, your own dimension as God has actually sculpted for you. The secret place, the place where you enter, that is unique to you and to God. It is unique to you. It is a place where it's a place of safety. It's a place where. You can open, it's a place where you can do as the Lord. It's a place where you can be naked and not ashamed. It's a place where fresh communication is. It's a place where you receive it fresh from the word, not second hand. Fresh from the word. Particularly drafted, peculiar to you, peculiar to your situation. Tailored to your circumstances. Now, in the secret place, one thing we must take careful note especially as written by this author, is the place of documenting the things that enter into our space. We must be intentional about documenting the fresh communication of God to us. And it doesn't end there. Fueled by obedience as seen in instructions. Now, when this instruct, when this fresh communication comes, it is important that we document it I discovered that when you document anything, it clarifies your thoughts. Now, a function of that is that whatsoever thing you write down, there is something you are communicating to God. You are telling God that I take and I respect what you are telling me. And because of that, you will find more. Because it's an attitude of appreciation. And appreciation is application for more. Blessed is the man that thanked the Lord for his finger. He will see the hand of the Lord. A man that thanked the Lord for the hand of the Lord, he will see the face of the Lord. Yes. Either you understand it or not, write what the Lord is saying. Because one thing is sure, as you are writing, your writing in itself will be inspiring understanding via clarity of thought. Yes. In the place of the secret, the place, the secret place, is a place where we 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 exchange our weakness for the strength of the Lord. The secret place is a place where we stay, a place where we recognize our innocence, the place where you recognize your nakedness, the place where you recognize what you are not doing enough, and you are saying, God, this is me again. You are not, you are not, you are not, uh, you are not a rig you are saying, God, here I am. And if you see men of the secret place, they are men that daily progress. They are men that on the daily, they are making progress. Men of the secret place. For anyone here that has actually not read The Secret of the Secret Place by Bob Surge, please, I recommend that you actually get that book. That is after you have read the journey. After you read the secret, the secret of the secret place. That book will transform us as you give heart to it. Looking forward, we must also understand that sometimes in luring us to the secret place, the Lord uses certain scenarios to bring us to the secret place. For some of us, we can be very stubborn or we can say we are tired. Certain, sometimes the Lord will orchestrate certain unpleasant circumstances or scenarios just to draw your attention to the secret place. It happens a lot. It happens a lot. It happens a lot. Countless number of times. Maybe because the Lord has actually been amari certain things in your space about the matter, but you are off and on, you are not there, you are not there. And the Lord will begin to, the Lord, the Lord in his mercy, in fact, is a master craft in that area. He will just okay say starting, look at look at Moses. He had not seen that kind of scenario before, and that thing led him to his place of calling. Don't forget, it is in that secret place that we understand ourselves. It is in that secret place we understand what we have been called to do. It is in that secret place we understand how we are meant to go. It is in that secret place that our eyes are opened, our ears are popped, our hearts begin to understand, and we are quickened to do of his good pleasure. 
the secret place. So God can go out of his way sometimes to orchestrate sometimes what we call it unfortunate circumstances. But those circumstances are meant to draw our attention to our Lord and our Savior. I pray for somewhere, the Lord in his mercy, you will find rest in the sacred place of God in the name of the Lord Jesus. And in that sacred place, it will draw us to study and to prayer. For some of us, the reason why we, the reason why you may currently be experiencing hard times is because the Lord is actually using that scenario. Did you not hear? For the children of Israel, the Lord, one of the reasons why they actually went through the wilderness was the Lord, the Lord was teaching them how to understand. He, he used poverty to teach them how to actually be in, in, in plenty, to teach them how to completely trust. Some of us, because of where the Lord is sending you to, you will begin to, you will just discover there is a lot of issues with finances. So it's because of where God is. And as you begin to give attention to that burning bush, before you know it, you will no longer be that prince of Egypt. You will not be a god unto Pharaoh. Some of us, the Lord needs to take us out of Egypt and take us to the wilderness for a period of time, to the back side of the mountain. The only thing we'll be doing will be feeding sheep. But we can be sure when we are done, when the Lord is done with you, you will not return back to it like a prince of Egypt, but a God unto Pharaoh, a God unto that situation, a God unto that trouble, a God into that family. And in the secret place, our convictions of God are strengthened. Mm. In the secret place, our convictions of God, what makes us believe, our, what, what, what gives us rest, about God, what makes us confident about what we believe about is strengthened. Is strengthened. Is strengthened. And it's in, in the place of this conviction that we receive the same power as regard to what we believe in. People of God, if you are yet to be convinced about what you believe in, the age and time that we are des- that we are in is desperate. What used to be yes before is now becoming no in our time now. What used to be wrong before is now appearing to be correct today. If we do not secure a place of conviction, especially in the secret place, we will discover, we will lose it. We will not be able to differentiate the truth and reality. Conviction distinguishes what is true from what is real. They are different things. <laughs> Don't forget that reality can be, is, reality is, 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 a, is, an, is, an, is a subjective data. What can be real to, him, to me can be may, may, may actually be a mirror to another person. You can ask me, I'm privileged to work in a mental health setting. Mm-hmm. But what is true? Come rain, come shine is true. What is true? Either in 2022 or in 2050 remains true. We secure this truth. And it is only by the truth that men are set to live, not by reality, not by what is real. It is by what it is by the truth. Scripture says, and you shall know the truth. It's not you shall know what is real. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Some people they want to enjoy real life. Now they have actually entered into real trouble. That will not be you and my that will not be your portion. That will not be my portion in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the aim of trying to find out what is real about life, trying to understand the little bit and neglecting the truth, have entered into trouble. Let's not forget. Let's not forget. The app, the forbidden fruit was real to Adam and Eve, but it was not the truth. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was, um, it was deceitfulness of of sin, coated in what looks good. The Lord will help and deliver us in the name of the Lord Jesus. Even if it is blurry, please, it, it, even if concerning any matter in our space, if it is blurry, stick more with God till you are convinced. You know, especially when we are beginning to remove, especially, I, I found out that um, in our age and time, especially Christian, you know, Christian community, the word conviction is more is more prominent in two places, especially two places in two two junctures in life. My observation actually, I stand to be corrected. Number one is when you give your life to God, what is your conviction about your salvation? And number two, when you want to actually get married. Forgetting that conviction is actually what keeps you in your journey as a believer. You know, you know how to marry now. This is my conviction, this is what I believe is my. Whatsoever sustain, whatsoever is, but whoever will stand the test of time, whatsoever will stand the test of time must be born 
out of conviction. We are, we are convinced about the truth. We can die for the gospel. We can die for the sake of this gospel. The, the, the act of the, the apostles, they were convinced of what they have actually received, and they could die for it. They could die for it because they were convinced. They were convinced. They were convinced. They were convinced that come Rico, they know they knew this Jesus as the Lord and Savior. Yes, they were convinced. So, in the same vein, if there's any matter we are yet to be convinced about that God is actually yet to put an um, a convicting scheme in our please stay there till you are convinced. Stay there. And when conviction comes, you will know. Yes. Lord help us in the name of the Lord Jesus. We must not fail to also mention that the secret place is a place of security. Now, now the secret place may not necessarily be an enclosed place. It may be this, the secret place for some people may be a place, may be a gathering of like-minded believers where revelation and truth and knowledge according to Bible is shared and prayers are made in accordance to that in, in accordance to that reality. The secret place for some people has are defined as the safe place of security. That is why scripture made us to understand. It says, do not forsake the gathering of the brethren because at a particular phase of your life, it will be like your secret place. It will be like a place where you receive guidance. It will be like a place where you receive direction. You receive instruction. Where, where like-minded believers are iron is sharpening iron instructions are coming guidance are coming understanding are coming and you are able to make progress the secret place blessed is the man that understands the secret place and such man they, they are men that make progress say. they are men that make progress mm. I don't need to say that because sometimes our secure our secret place our place of security is a place God has actually destined is a place that God has kept, a place where guarding of believers, guarding of believers, guarding of believers. Scripture give us a stern warning in Hebrew 13. Do not forsake the guarding of believers. Believers. And what do believing people do? They study, they pray, and they do. They obey. They study, they pray, and they obey. The Lord help us in the name of the Lord Jesus. As we begin to Make progress. I just talk about the new psychiatric posting experience as reviewed in the book. Yes. Mm. You know, <laughs> one thing about it is it's a it's more of like an atmosphere, an atmosphere, a land of full of encounters. As the author said, negative encounters, positive encounters. Now one of the things that I found out in this particular section is while we must train our senses to be able to discern environment, environment. In fact, I discovered that environment or atmospheres actually have a purpose. There is no space you enter into that does not have a purpose for. So if you don't have, if you, if you don't have a plan for yourself, the environment actually has a plan for you. Any atmosphere you enter into has a plan on itself for you. It has a plan for you. It has a plan. Ah, Jesus, help me now. As, there is a plan. There is a plan. So if you if you meander, you just entered anyhow, brother, you just discover that you are doing... Did you not see what... He said that which I wanted to do. I cannot... You just discover you are doing things that you don't want to do because you are under a governing influence. You are under an atmosphere. As nurses, especially I believe there are students here, as nurses as we attend lectures, go to go to for postings. So it is it is it is it is an anathema for you to just enter any space, any posting, any word, any angle. Oh just like how humans carry possibilities, just like how you can be relating to a particular person, and you just discover that since the day you started relating with that person, favor upon every favor every day. Favor every day, goodness every day, pray, progress every day. Just like our humans are, are routers of possibility, environment also, atmospheres, they are every atmosphere actually has a purpose. Yes, it is it is a governing influence. So if you meander into and forget and 
look and because we live in a spiritual environment and because this atmosphere they are governed they are governed by certain spirits they are looking for vessels to find expression through that is why lust can be can be can be can actually be prevailing over an atmosphere a man will just enter into that place and after a while you discover is beginning to actually have the characteristic feature of that which is hanging in an atmosphere in the same way how a man can actually enter into an atmosphere that is saturated with god and that man they actually just begin to speak in really good environment atmosphere actually has purpose they are not just there for nothing so we must discern and understand every environment we enter into you don't just enter into any world anyhow even taking over and hand over every day all of those are my god thank you father entering into atmosphere entering, even taking over on your word you don't know what a transfer overnight and you just go back to you are just you can cry even you can do you are not just happy you cannot tell what is happening you are inside an atmosphere <laughs> an atmosphere so if we if we don't come to an understanding of how to leverage or how be it leverage on atmospheres or leverage on the tools within the atmosphere we will be we will be taken on our ways. Yes. Now our posting experience. In 2015, our seniors went to our posting experience for me in 20 in 2014. So when they came back, when we were going, and I want to encourage for some of us that are in the process of nothing, I don't know if they should do this. But please share your arrow experience with your juniors that are coming or younger colleagues. For I remember when I was we were coming to Aru, our the, the fellowship then organized a prayer for my class. They shared their revelation, they shared their experiences. When he said Aru, Aru, A R R O W. If you go there careless, they will shoot you Aru. You are in trouble. I said, God, what is this? Why? What is this? Come and see prayer. In fact, I say, God, what is happening? It is sarcastic posting. What they told us about their experience. Ah, oh, I say so. I think we'll leave, no? <laughs> We are back on the journey. A day proud that the Lord was beginning to inspire into my heart. Begin to put in my heart. Okay, the things I needed to go. To cut the long story short, when I got to the land, the Lord made me to understand that throughout your stay in this posting, you're actually going to be fasting. I say, ah. Oh. Round one, pan address, I want to be there. I say, oh God, what is this? Now, and this is the place of we understanding the place of, um, or number one, the secret place, understand the communication and an atmosphere. And I can remember there were two prayer points I was praying throughout that posting. But we are, we are in Arrow for a period of 42 days, plus the day we came and stayed village. So 40 days. So the 40 day prayer regimen for me. 6 a.m. before they open, 6 a.m. at the opening the gates, then narrow. I've gone out. I'll be there, pray from 6 to 7, go back. After class again, look for one of those same places and, you know, pray and, you know, and all of those things. I was praying a prayer. Number one, I think one of the prayer was from Psalm 22, that none of the bones of my classmates will be broken. None of it will be broken. I, I was just praying because a lot of things were happening. How this one, all of a sudden, people that are not girlfriend and boyfriend in class when we were in school, they were just, I was, I was sharp praying. And of course, for myself also, I was praying. Because for me, for me, I didn't know it was actually a preparatory experience for me, especially. It was a time of enlargement and capacity because on coming back from Aru, I entered into fellowship presidency. It was later I now understood the reason why God was preparing so much. I had to go through such terrific regimen. I remember then when I received my first term, uh, when I received my pocket money, also when I was in Aru, the Lord told me that I should show everything. What is this? What? This thing is so it. I borrowed money to go to bank to go and withdraw the money. I brought, I brought the money. I put it inside the envelope. I the next Sunday in church. I went to drop it. I see how we are going to feed now. It's up to you. I learned straw. Fasting, there was no money. The, Oju, now I was in our Oju Mio, Teta Gate, Tiara. I think I only went out of the gate three times out of all those people who are looking for. They are going to, they are going to, maybe to a place where they are going to look more. No time. They are waking up, they are running to the cathedral. There was a particular day I was in the cathedral from morning to night. 
I think that day I live to seven messages. Ray fell there, he beats me there. The sun started shining, he shone on me there. I said, that is, you don't understand from the rising of the sun to the setting of the sea, your name is to be alone. You understood the meaning of that song. Now, that environment is, 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 is a thick environment. It's an environment, it's an atmosphere where encounters are so diverse. So, your preparation or your discernment as you enter into any space, any environment, especially as nurses, we are, we are, God has given us grace of access. You know, especially, we start from posting. You go to this posting, you just discover that so for some people, you enter this posting, like, this, I, want to, I want to do this specialty. You enter another posting, governing atmosphere. So, we must be careful. God must help us to discern the atmosphere that we enter into the environment and the possibilities they carry. They are very important. It is an anathema for you to enter into any atmosphere unguarded, unchecked, uninstructed. Because you will not leave such environment the same. Environment, and you enter into an environment should be active. It should be a blessing. For people who go into, for people going to Aru, you should leave Aru better equipped. Strengthening in your inner man especially. Because there are diverse of resources available on that land. The author made us understand that there is a link between quietness and hearing the speakings of God. And that is why it is in retreat I encouraged. I used to tell people when you come to Arrow, it's a moment for you to retreat. Quiet people, quiet place, retreat back to back. There is you, you, you see, and we must God must help us to learn how to run away from the crowd. You know why? Because the voice of God, many a time, is not loud in the crowd, but very audible when we are alone. The voice of God is not loud when we are in the crowd. Many a time, it is audible, very audible when we are alone. Very audible when we are alone. So some of us, we must learn how to, we must to extinguish ourselves. Is that the right thing this time? To, 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 to punch with the crowd for a season, for a time, to be able to secure the counsel of the Lord. The author made mention of how his particular birthday is starts with the Lord that is celebrated in Arrow. And now the Lord blessed him so much. And upon the strength of that, he was able to receive strength in his now to be able to say no to certain things. Retreat. One of the reasons for retreat is that so that he can actually be able to secure an atmosphere, an enabling atmosphere, and to be able to secure the audience of God. Many of those things we want to hear, if only we will retreat alone, we will hear them more deeply. We will hear them more deeply. Some, some of those things you don't even need to you don't need to go to the mountains to hear them right in the corner of your room while you're on your bed. Just praying, God, help me. God, show me this thing. It will come in the stillness. Scripture says the Lord was not in the fire. He was not in the earthquake. He was not in the thunder. He said he came in a still, small voice. When last did you hear that still, small voice? And when it came, when did you obey? When last did you hear that voice? That voice has more strength than its looks because it comes with a power of fulfillment. The earlier we understand, if you remember Jacob prophecy very well, Peter made us understand, he said, and when they were crossing, he sent his family and his luggage and he went to camp with God. Certain situations in our life, we will not break through certain cycle until we understand how to stay with God alone. In no cap, no, no lies. Even Jesus practices, scripture says, a great while before dawn. A great while before dawn, excuse me, a great while before dawn, he has gone to stay with God alone. Little wonder, hours with God, few moments with men. And when I mean few moments with men, hours with God, he has made, God has made him, the Father has made him to understand. You will meet a man today, you will see a man, all he just will just tell him, see, and he will see, touch, and he will, that's fine. Moments with men, because ours has gone into staying with God and understanding the speakings of God, what to do, how to do it, what to say, what not to say. Especially on auspicious dishes or when we actually want to make very life-critical decisions. Please, let's learn to take time to stay with God alone. One of the blessedness of singlehood is you have time to be alone. Especially before you get engaged and you begin to have, you know, relationships here and there, the blessed have time to be alone, to be single, to understand clearly. 
to bear the yoke when you are young, to understand clearly where am I going, which ship am I going into, what, where am I going about it alone. 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 I see the Lord helping us in the name of the Lord because when we spend time with God alone, our defense system, our defense is built. A wall of defense is built and we are strengthened for the within. We are stronger. I, I, has anybody observed it before? Yes, yeah, sometimes. Sometimes when you actually reach certain materials, when you come out, you feel high back on, you feel intoxicated. Does it happen to anybody here? Let's say maybe you actually got engrossed in a particular book. You now came out. The way you are seeing everybody, you be like, you are, you, you are like a giant. You are no more than your stature, but the certain information that has actually entered your space, you are like, hi, what's crazy number? All right, it's bad. You know, you feel, yeah. you feel that it is the same way when you actually go and retreat before God, especially in the days when, like Timothy says, redeeming the days for the days we are, we are in. And it will, one of the fastest ways of we redeeming these days is when we actually come with God, staying there with God, staying with God. And especially for some people that actually back in, your, 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 your walls of defense are built. You are strengthened from within. You are fortified. You have the ability to say no to what God does not want. You have the strength to be able to pursue what God has actually given you to. Why do you think David will actually go and ask and say, God, should I pursue? Because you understand that if God says pursue, God will not just say pursue. God will grant him the strength from the within to pursue. And if God tells you to pursue, because there is a there is a provision for you to overtake, and when you overtake, there is a provision for you to take the spoil. Yes, there is a strength that comes with staying. That is why scriptures say, "They that wait upon the Lord, they that wait, they that wait, they that wait, their strength shall be renewed like the eagles. They will fly. They will fly." <laughs> they will fly. People of God, for, for some of us, and there are certain mountains in our life that we are trying to walk or run on. Why do you want to walk up for a mountain? Why do you want to run up a mountain when you can actually fly over it? Why? Why do you want to walk on it? Why do you want, why do you want to do mountaineering when you can actually just fly over the mountain? Wasting time. Why do you ask? Ah, what? You want to fly? You want to walk upon the mountain? You want to? Who send you message? When there is a provision in God for you to just take a flight? Fly over it and move on to the next level of things. There's no time. No time. No time. No time. You must understand that one secret about our obedience to the will of God is that it gives us the power to obey more. It's important that we continuously choose God every time. Please, I beg you, refuse to be a man pleaser. Ah. If you're a pleaser of men, men that you are pleasing, we see abusing and, and see Tammy as a man pleaser. Man, uh, desire that any any situation that you are in, you will choose God. You will choose the, the, you will choose God. You will choose God over and over again. The principles of God, the standard of God, over and over again. And when you begin to do it over time, one thing you will discover is that a light will effort from your space, and same we actually attract men. Mm. Yes, sir. And one thing we must also take note of is that light does not only attract those that likes it, it also attracts those that want to snuff it out. Light does not attract those that it likes or those that likes it. It also attracts those that are actually planning to snuff it out. And that is why I say light, you must stay perpetually in the place of source. We must stay connected. We must stay connected to the place where light and the power of light is continuously generated. At this point, maybe I need to actually make mention about talk about um, association. 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 We'll we, we talk about it. We'll talk about it as we make progress. No, we just, uh, as we begin to on return, on return. On return, on return, on return. The the author made us to understand that um, there is always a day of return. There is always a day of reckoning. There is always a day when everything that has actually been given to you will be asked of. How did you use it? There is always that day. There is wherever you have been sent to. For example, now, whatever posting you are actually going to, there is a day you will return back, and it is 
for a child of God, you are supposed to return back better than you actually came. You go to a world, you are supposed to return more in your form, albeit better transformed or better renewed, renewed, strengthened than you actually visited that world. For me now, when I actually went to Arrow now, when I was in basic, when I was, a, when I was in my basic training, I did not return back the same way I went. In fact, the day I even go to Arrow, if you told lady, I, that was the first day I actually had the diarrhea. I was stooling blood. I said, where did I It has never happened to me before. I said, what kind of place have I entered? It was there. So when God said, wait for me for 40 days, so I said, ah, no, I will wait. Uh, 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 I said, you've never, you've never spent 24 hours. You're already stooling blood. What who knows what's actually going to happen by the point? Uh, <laughs> God, I will wait, I will wait, I will wait. Now, I did not leave Arrow the same way. Just in the same vein, there is no space that we've actually been, we, we, we enter into that we are supposed to actually live the same. Mm -mm. And we discover that anywhere the Lord will actually place him and anywhere the Lord will actually keep you for a place, there are, there are, the Lord does not leave us without a witness. What I'm, witness I'm talking about does not leave us without a mode of operation, does not leave us without an instruction to follow by time. And in this kingdom, we fly by instructions. We fly by instructions. Why do I say it again? Why do you want to climb the mountain when you can fly over the mountain? Why? Secure the instruction and fly. Stay. Let the instruction come. Trust him for the obedience and fly over it. Fly over it. One of the things that works to help us in this season and time especially as we review this particular chapter, is that we must learn how to guard the gates, the human gates, the eyes, the ears, and the hearts. We are in an age and time where the devil has invested so much to making sure that the battleground of a man, the mind of a man, is in, continual, is in continuous contention with both bad and evil. What are you feeding your eyes with? What you are feeding your eyes with will really actually help you to make progress as a believer. What are you hearing? What are you thinking about? What are you feeding your mind to battle with? Many of us, the battles we've lost, we have first lost in our heart because of the tools, the food we fed it with. What are you feeding your heart through your eyes? What are you feeding your heart to your ears? What are we looking at? What are you, the things that you are looking at, if God were there with you, will you look at them? Those stuffs you are hearing or listening to, if God was there, will you hear them and understand that God is everywhere? Many of the battles we have lost in our life were because that because of the tools that we supplied our mind to fight with them. Scripture says, <laughs> oh Jesus, help us. He said, and when he opened as, and he said, and why were it? Did our hearts not born? When, we, when he was reading what he was written before, did our hearts not born? He opened our eyes to see the scripture, and the eyes of our understanding did us down enlightened. Our eyes, our ears, and our hearts. Scripture says, guard your hearts with all diligence while out of it commit the issues of life. Guard what you feed your eyes. It's not every movie that you are supposed to watch. There are some that they are just um, they are just um, they are just um, cancer encoded in good-looking apparel. Some people have made the wrong life decision because they actually took their cues from a movie. For some people, certain music determines their mood and they, get it, and they get it all wrong. These things actually have the power of altering life and destiny. So we must give very close attention to them. If we must survive, how do we get to the place of destination as we run it through life? We must pay attention to what we feed our eyes, what we feed our ears, 
and what enters our heart. If these gates are well guarded, I can assure you by the message of the Lord that progress will not be far. In fact, we will daily walk in progress. And I tell you for free, it can actually be worth it some of the times. It can really be worth it. It can really, really be worth it. it can, staying consecrated with regards to what is feed your eyes, what is feed your ears, uh, it can really be worth it. But we can be sure that yeah, by the help of the Lord, we can always know progress. That is sure. And lastly, outside the campus, maybe this is where we talk about taking care of the opposite sex, you know, relating with, you know, opposite sex. I would just like to point out three things, especially in an age and time where, you know, where you begin to relate with people, where you relate to the opposite sex, a lot of things. I would just point out three things that I know can be a safeguard so that we actually not fall into error, fall into problems, fall into issues as we're looking forward. Number one is, please learn to define your relationship, especially with the opposite sex. Don't keep it an open check. My dear brother, define your relationship with that sister. My sister, define your relationship with that brother so we'll not be having issues or stories that touch the earth. Define the relationship. It will save you a lot of problems and stress in the future. Especially as we join, especially let's say after not and all of that, as you walk, let's be intentional with our definition of relationship. Don't leave any relationship like open check. Let us see how it goes. Many a times you don't go anywhere in such relationship. Ah, ah, such times don't go anywhere. Many of the time, define and in every conversation you have, make sure the definition of your relationship is in tandem, it is there. It is there. And it's in definition of your relationship that you'll be able to find the place of setting of boundaries. Setting of boundaries. Especially relating the opposite. We cannot but relate with ourselves. We are brothers and sisters. We have a lot of instructions for relating ourselves. But we must be clear about our relationship so that we know this is how far I can go. This is how low I can go. And such will be able to make progress. I know this is this person. This is this person. I can, you know, Definitely. Number two, have the fear of God. Have the, let the fear of God saturate our hearts. Be that Joseph. There are so many times that so many circumstances or so many situations we find ourselves. Sexual logic and all of those things. Have the, be, be a Joseph. Determine that you be a Joseph. That if you are... Oh God. I used to say this. There was a prayer we used to pray in my secondary school. That can, you know... You know, then second is gonna put and all of those things. There's a prayer to pray one, 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 one year like that. That God, if I do, if I feel like actually having sex, let the person I want to have it with not 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 feel like having it. God, if she if he or she feels like having it, let me not feel like having it. God, if both of us feel like having it, let us not find a comfortable environment to have it. God, if both of us are feeling like it and we find a comfortable environment, God. Send an interrupter, someone that will, that will interrupt what we want to do. The fear of God, it must saturate our heart. Then it is not for sure. It is so that our future can actually be guarded. We'll be untarnished. We'll be a man. We'll be men of standing. We'll be men without blemish. Have the fear of God. And, number, and I think the last thing, we should not be, sh- we should not be, we should, let us not shy away from being accountable is very important. Accountability, especially as we grow in life, is very important. Someone you can actually relay with, you can relate to the finest of details with. So that you can bring understanding, especially when it comes to relating with, we, we, are, we don't, don't, <laughs> thing they say, thrive in secrecy. In fact, the devil love, I saw something on someone's status, he said the devil will not will never want you to be caught. Listen again. The devil will never want you to be caught. He will never want you to be caught in doing anything secret, any secret, anything. He will not want you to be caught because he knows that provided they are saying there, yeah, he will continue. <laughs> he will continue. You will continue to advance his enterprise. 
in secrecy. Don't keep anything that is not secret so that it will not be what will actually burn up your space in time. I will not actually affect your consecration with the Lord. And it is important to safely say that I don't cope with an environment that is that would not that you don't have strength for. The author said, else you'll be corrupted and it will even catch you by surprise. So it is best you actually increase your volume of time in God's atmosphere where energy and strength is supplied for survival. Be separate from men that are known that are not according to the purpose God has put in you. Get strength and return back to help them. It is safer that way. It is safer that way. In this institution, as we are, as we, we cannot do without the place, so we must be intentional about giving ourselves to prayer, to watch study, to fasting. It is a regime we must give ourselves to. If we must escape the vows of the enemy, if we must survive the temptations of the tempter. In fact, sometimes it's when you are in the secret prayer, the Lord will begin to expose that area, that dark area of loss, that dark area of trouble, that dark area of in our life. And as we begin to expose ourselves to them, we find liberty, we find salvation. For some of us, what we may just need to do is to confess. And scripture says, when you confess, he said that ye may be healed and healing will come. If we must journey and journey into the place of progress, we cannot do it outside of diligent prayer, study of God's word, and with fasting. Those regimen, they are very, very important. The intricacies of that, we're not be able to discuss, but it is actually very important. Prayer. I think I even really, really said little about prayer. But one thing I want us to understand or pick from this place, that God answers prayer, especially those prayers that actually come from the sincere heart. And if we give our attention to it, it's a matter of time. We'll be able to, we will find, we will find our vessel, a vessel of expression of the grace of God. There, there are a lot of dimensions that our world has never seen. But not until men begin to dig deep into God, those things may not actually find expression in our age and time. God is looking for a man that will actually give attention to this matter. Look at the act of the apostles. Come on now. Look at the deeds that they actually made up on. Till today. Holy man shadow be healing the sick. What can what can, what can, what can explain that? And the apostles gave themselves to prayer and to the study of the world, to the ministry of the world. A man preaches a single message, 3,000. A man giving themselves to prayer and to the ministry of the world. We want to be a wonder in our age and time. The men that have given themselves to prayer and to the ministry of the world. And in this way, we are becoming large and we can together advance the kingdom of the Lord without breaking around. I see the Lord helping us. I see the Lord causing us to make progress even in our various places of endeavors and inciting and inspiring our hearts to do of his good pleasure again and again in the name of the Lord Jesus. I think I may just need to actually stop here to allow for questions and um, reviews and all of those things. Over to you, Ma. Thank you so much, sir. We are super, super grateful. Thank you so much. I'm still trying to, to recover and trying to sink in so many things at the same time. God bless you, sir. We are deeply grateful. I know I've been blessed, and I know that every single person here has been blessed as well. The Lord will help us to put in practice each and everything that we have been taught, that we have been shown tonight by revelation. Uh, I I put it on the chat. If you have any questions, if you have any questions, if you want to ask yourself, you can type it in. If you want to ask in person, you can use the hand raise option and then we will take it turn after turn. Does anybody have any questions? Mazab Goloba, Victoria, Mazajayi, Luate Biloba, Akile, Bulisola, Amore, Asimike, Mazab Daniels, Messi, Mazab Messi, Olaye, 
Adela Pixi, not an Eda. So, Mr. Kwe, Jeremiah, does anybody have any questions? Or you want to, you want to ask for your friend, you want to ask for yourself, please feel free. Feel free. You cannot come to a place like this, a meeting like this, hear the things you've heard and just go back and continue to struggle and continue to to wallow. No. Please, that's not permitted. So if you have any questions, you have any concern, you want to air, please use the chat box or use the hand those option. So but Peter, I think I have a question I want to ask on behalf of of someone. I have um I have someone who consistently experiences a kind of rise and fall. She she would be fine with God, be consistent in the study, she would um be consistent in worship. She also carries her Bible to, to class to read. She studies a little bit for about forty minutes before she now dives into um, her books and all. But then suddenly something would happen, nothing physical, nothing physical. In fact, I'm trying to identify, are there any triggers? Is it from home? Is it her friend? But suddenly the zeal to pray, the zeal to study, everything just dies down. She begins to doubt her salvation. She begins to doubt. And you know, we would go through it together. We would pray, we would fast, and then she's back on track again. And then after maybe two or three weeks, most times three weeks, that cycle repeats itself. And at this point, I really don't know what to do. What, what would be your, your opinion or your advice for such a person that just experiences this up and down, up and down, periodically, periodically? She's a student. Okay. Um, I, I want to believe that uh, we've all had our shares of um, rise and falls, ups and downs. And I think critical amidst the things that actually brought us into um, light, albeit um, understanding of consistent or upward progress is, um, I think, number one. Number one is um, understanding of the information understanding of the knowledge, understanding of the word that is actually coming to your space. My, my, uh, understanding, I mean, having an understanding of what has actually happened to you. You know, sometimes you know, the rise and falls will continue until you're able to it's just like um, what, is that, what I can actually pass from that person's issue is the conviction is not, is not there. The conviction is not there because if the conviction is there, we are sure that there will be a continued upward trend, all right? So the conviction is not there. So what we may need to give attention to now is how do we, how will these convictions actually be strengthened? Number one, such person may actually have to let go of the past. Many a time we've actually attributed some of these issues rise and fall to things that are actually not, things that are, you know, on things from the past. There are certain things that, you know, when you pull back, you see, because that should I go past, should I go past things of the past, major past past issues. It may be a guilt, it may be, uh, it may be, it may be a disobedience, it may be a sin, or ever. Things that you've actually not let go of yourself, you've actually not let go. It will continuously cause rising and falling. And of course, it depends on the person's, the person's um, work with God. There may be a certain instruction a certain instruction that this person is actually is shying away from because I discover us many a times not until we actually obey God on certain matters or particular once we actually giving full obedience on certain matter we may not be able to make progress spiritual wise because the, the, the point of matter is that our obedience at a particular level guarantees us access to the next and I think lastly this person we actually need to be in a space of a, you know, we really cannot do much outside relationship or partnership in this world. God is man. God is, um, if God wants to actually help a man, he will send a man. You understand? So, such person mm -hmm. must actually also be within the continuous ambience of men that actually are from, not men that actually deliver him, men that actually show what they are doing, men that show what they are doing, men that actually 
they have true experiences they have true encounters of what god can do what god represents and what god is with valid proofs infallible proofs and signs such way such person number one we mentioned about understanding of the knowledge of truth that this person is receiving you must understand it it must be it must be, it must be granted in your space it must you must be convinced of it you know it's just like mm-hmm. ah, i can believe that this is a book today and by tomorrow someone comes to tell me that it's a textbook i'll be like hey, is this textbook? Book, textbook. if i don't understand why it is a book if that person does not understand why that person have, the why she's actually a christian it may be a, it may be difficult going forward and number two is letting go of the past scripture made us understand that that first thing. he said forget the things that are, 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 are behind look he said he said see why do a new thing many a times the things that actually holding us causing us to move five step forward six step backward is because there are still certain things that is tied to our past that we are still trying to dilly dally that we are still trying to you know take a bit here, try to make progress. There must be a complete severing from the past. That's what scripture says. He said, he said, um, first Corinthians 5 13 now. Is it 5 13 now? He said, For the new creature, all things are passed away, all things are become those old things must be passed, parted away with. And number three, ambience, fellowship of men that actually really know what they are doing. If we actually engage this in, we can be sure that we actually secure the truth. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so our next question um says that thank you so much, sir, for the teaching. We've been so blessed during this session. My question goes thus: what are the things that can keep a burden in the heart of a man? Meaning, what 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 are the things, the activities, what regimen, spiritual regimen can you continually exercise to retain a body such that you don't catch a body in a, within a week it's gone you've lost it okay okay um let me start by saying what brings a body keeps a body if you receive a body in the place of prayer that body must be kept by prayer if you receive a body while you're actually studying that burden must be sustained by the place of study. Because we, we, we established earlier that burdens come, they are tied with a blessing, and they actually have an end. So burdens are meant to be executed. I'll be, they draw our attention to a thing God wants us to see. So in that regard, what we are trying to say is that whatever brings a burden is responsible for keeping that body. If you contact a body in the place of prayer now, in the execution of that prayer, you prayer cannot be left out. But the activities that you can actually do to sustain that body. In fact, because bodies are not things that we just mean, they are made to be executed. So whatever brings the body is responsible for keeping the body. So if it comes in the place of prayer, you must continue to pray until the body is executed. That way it will be sustained. That way it will be kept. That way the its freshness will actually stay. And in that way, as you continue to engage, you discover that progress is coming forth. So whatever brings a body, it sustains, it sustains that body. I don't know if that actually answers the question some sort. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Our next question says, thanks for the power pack review, sir. You mentioned about the waiting phase. Now, the question is, as a believer, how do we keep going in, in the waiting phase? knowing fully well that this space can also be challenging at times. The waiting face. Someone said God has a television in his waiting room. Just sit down there and be watching. Mm-hmm. Waiting face. One of the things that um, you see in the waiting face of God, God determines okay, there are two factors that determines how long a man stays in the waiting phase. Of course, that is God and is the man. And we must establish that why, why, why am I waiting? The first thing that I must do in the waiting phase is find out why you are waiting so that we're not waiting in vain. When God has told you or your man gets a go, you are still trying to mm-mm. find out the reason for the wait. Why are you waiting? What are you waiting for? 
Now, in the place of in waiting, there are numerous activities, and the foremost of those activities, number one, is you securing a word that will serve as an anchor from the from the scriptures. A word that when the billows of the pressures of waiting come, a word you can be able to hold on to and say, This is what the Lord has said about this matter, and I will stay to it. The reasons why there are promises is because they are waiting period. Promises, the promises man tag during waiting period. Because promises are testimonies waiting to be fulfilled. Promises are testimonies waiting to be fulfilled. So in the waiting period, one of the things you do is secure the promises of the Lord as regard what you are waiting about, are waiting for, and begin to engage them, begin to come, begin to do as we as we begin to do as that season instructs. Many a times the reason why our waiting is prolonged is because we've actually refused to do certain things sometimes. And the reason why our waiting is because we are climbing the mountain. When all we just need to do is obey the instruction that have been given to us and we fly over the mountain. Waiting. So number one, we must understand why we are telling what we are waiting for. Identify it in blue and in black and in black and white, and secure promises that surround that waiting period, and begin to give attention to them. Begin to give attention to them. Begin to see what would the Lord actually have me do. Because the truth is, every waiting is a preparative phase to the next stage. It's a preparative phase to the next stage. The Lord will not have you found face Goliath when you have not killed lion and the deer. If you go like that, it's the head of David he will bring back to the children of Israel. The Lord will not have you go and face Goliath when you have actually not dealt with the lion and the bear. So sometimes for us, our waiting period may actually be in the wilderness. It may be the preparation. And you find out after David killed Goliath, he automatically emerged as a national hero. His waiting period appeared to be over. But he did not even end there. He became a national hero at 17. But not until 30, he did not see become king. Waiting period. Waiting period. Mm-hmm. So many a time, they are preparing this space onto a next period. But we must understand the speaking of God. I want to give attention to what God is actually saying. Pattern, so that when God is saying, now stand up, you will not still be sitting down. Mm-hmm. When God is saying, move, you will not still be stand. And when God is saying, wait, you will not start running. So understand what you are waiting for. Secure promises around those things and begin to engage those promises. And as you begin, you begin to obey them, giving yourself fully unto them. One of the things waiting will also do to you is to cause you to understand what patience is. Your boys will be enlarged. You will understand it. And it is a definition. Many a time, waiting period is a precursor to or it identifies in a way where we are going to. So blessed is the man that the Lord tells to wait because for such man, the Lord is actually creating something new. If that thing was in stock, the Lord will not tell you to wait. You will just enter into it. If that thing... If the Lord is actually telling you to wait about the matter, it's because He's cooking something different. What you are to, look just for example now, go to a wait, go to a, a restaurant. This time that the, the waitress and waiter will actually come. If they actually tell you to wait, it's because what they actually serve is not yet or is, is currently it may be on the menu, hmm? but it's not yet ready to be served. So you wait. So if God tells you to wait, it is because there is something cooking, something new that is being cooking. When it comes. It, you'll be you'll be you'll be you you'll be happy that you waited. We've seen all through scriptures men that actually hasted. Is there any word like that? That hasting their progress and what they ended up into. So in waiting is a preparation for a phase that is next. It is a it is a season that will bring ourselves under the measure of God. It's a season where the long things in your life. Is cut according to the measure of God. Is a season where those short things in your life is grown according to the measure of God. Those big things are trimmed down so that when you get to the place of manifestation, you will not make noise, you will just fit. I see the Lord helping us in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, sir. So just to reiterate to um, the person who asked the question, the first thing to do. In your waiting period is to identify why you are waiting why are you waiting what are you waiting for and then begin to get um scriptures that uh, promises and scriptures that give you an anchor for that season as well 
and things. Just in addition, I believe one of the things you can do in your waiting period is a lot of worship and a lot of praise. Thanking God for the manifestation of what you've not yet seen. The manifestation of why he has told you to wait. If he has told you to wait concerning a talent, concerning a gift he wants to give you, begin to thank him. Thank you because I, I, I express this gift with grace. Thank you because I am I'm walking expressly in this gift. Just begin to thank him. It's also an expression of faith as well in your waiting period. Um, our last question before we pray um, says that, how do I know God is calling me to a place of consecration? How do I know that God is calling me to a place of consecration? Um, to be honest, every believer has been told to the place of consecration. However, our consecration may differ. Every believer has been called because, you know, consecration is what is one of the economy that God uses to equip you. It's one of the things God uses to equip you, one, a man into his place of call. Consecration and calling, they're like two signs of it. Or consecration is a precursor to call. It's your consecration is peculiar to the call of God over your life. Every man must go through, every believer, especially that will be used of the Lord, must go through a season, must, must have a consecration over their head. It is that consecration that will serve as an edge in their place of assignment, in their place of call. So, and when this call begins to, be, when it begin, when the announcement is near, you will definitely enter into so season of consecration. Then you, you will just, at those, as you begin to enter, you will discover that certain things will disgust you that actually make sense to other people. Or certain things you begin to you begin to find affinity for things that normally people around are not they are just lackadaisical about. For example, your consecration, eh, if the Lord is actually calling you to, for example, now let's say your country, you actually have a prophetic gift in your call over your space. God may actually restrict you from actually seeing movies even for a long period of time. That's just an example. Why? So that what you are feeding your eyes will not contaminate your prophetic vista. Or will not corrupt your prophetic gesture. For example, if you are the prayer God has actually called into the place of intercession, particular times of the day, the Lord may be calling you to actually come and pray. Not because you actually have so many prayer points, but because as you are responding to that call, something is happening. There's an enlightenment that is happening to your space. You are being shaped specially to fit into the place of your call. So every believer is every believer is actually has, um, has been consecrated to has been consecration is like being set apart onto something set apart onto a unique assignment set apart onto a unique call you will know when it begins to actually come over your space you will know that this is what the Lord is actually certain things will just begin to certain strange instructions will begin to come your way certain strange things that, that looks like ah, this is happening to me for example now you can begin to Certain regiment will entirely enter your space that you know that this is God setting you apart onto your unique call and measure. You are setting you apart onto your unique and particular place of assignment. So that is this and more. Consecration is something for every believer, but our consecration may, will be different because our calling also is not the same. I don't know if I've actually answered that question well. Yeah, you have, sir. You have. But, um, uh, how, how do I say this? How, how do you know? What, what do you see? Are there, are there things you see or you perceive? Or is it that probably you see it in a dream? I'm trying to ask it from the perspective of the person that asks, you know? Like, she wants to, okay. wants to know, okay, what are the signs I would see? You know, that I'm called to be consecrated in this part or in this part or for this. Apart from the general all call right, okay, of consecration so, upon the lives of all people, because okay, now, because God has times and seasons in His hands. 
every man's call into consecration differs to every man's timeline differs. But when, as you approach the period of you being set apart, you will, you will, how do I put it now? The instructions that will be coming to your space will be different from, different now I mean, will be unique to you. There is a uniqueness of instructions that come into your space. When God begins to, when you begin to enter your place of calling, uniqueness of instruction. Uniqueness of instruction. You, the, the instructions that actually enter your space, they are tailored to your situation. As a, and you discover that as you begin to, as you begin to, as you begin to give attention to those instructions, as you begin to give kind attention to those instructions, you discover that you'll be making progress into that place of call. So, Jamina means one of those things is the place of, and another thing you will discover that you have an unusual thirst for the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Yes. An unusual thirst for the ministry of the Holy Spirit because you, we cannot fulfill the call of God over our life singularly or humanly speaking. By the measure, by the economy of God, there will be an unusual, it's like you say, precautions of consecration. There will be an unusual thirst within your space. You just want to know what the Spirit, you want to know the you want to know how personal the Holy Spirit is, is to you. You want to know what is what 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 makes the Holy Spirit peculiar. You want you are, there's an unusual thirst for knowledge, for an in, for an experiential knowledge about the Holy Spirit because you'll be chief and responsible in your work of consecration, albeit into your place of calling. So, number one, unique instructions will be coming your way. Number two, an unusual thirst for the person of the Holy Spirit to be entering your space. And number three, you will discover that certain scenarios that will be, that will be orchestrated in your space, certain scenarios will be orchestrated in your space that will point you to that which God is actually calling your attention to. That's where we'll be able to make progress. Thank you, Sam. Thank you so, so much. Let us take um, let us take Peter. Let us take quickly. Maybe just take Paul, for example. Now, when Apostle Paul, before he became an apostle, now, when you discover that when God started the calling, you discover that the scenario that actually surrounded his conversion, you discover that it was only him that had the voice of God. Others just had thunderings and they saw lightning. But Paul had. He had the, 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 the sin that followed made him blind, but what he had opened up his ears and led him to a man called Ananias, and it was that man that made him to understand the counsel of God for him. And upon the strength of that, he entered into his call. And over time, his dealings came about. Dealings, dealings. Those dealings begin to chisel your consecration, and of course, the work in tandem. Before you know it, you are actually working in the place of God, and as you really speak up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much, sir. I'm very, very grateful. Thank you for the sacrifice of your time. I want to thank every single person that has made it a point of duty to be here, stay from beginning to the end. I believe that something in our heart, something in our spirit has shifted. We've grown, we've expanded. Our ears, our ears will never be dull of hearing by the grace of God. And even as we round up and as we pray, I pray that every word that has been spoken here becomes spirit and life to us as we depart, as we go to bed, as we go about our businesses, stepping into the new week. We will take this experience, we will take this, these words and we will put it into practice. That we will not just be hearers of the word only, but we will be doers, we will be performers of the word, yes the performance of the word and we pray and we begin to thank God for how he has helped us tonight how he has made the network to be stable how he has ministered through our speaker and personal brother Big Peter how he has answered our questions how he has met our needs I believe that needs have been met heart cries have been heard questions have been answered by virtue of this session of this book review I believe believe that someone has stepped into a new phase of their journey, of their walk with God. 
by virtue of this session. Can we just thank him? Father, we thank you. We do not take this for granted. We don't take this for granted, Lord Jesus. We do not take this for granted. We are grateful on the platform that you have brought us to, to bless us, that you have called us to, that you made this night, this, this, this space, this season possible for us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving us ears to hear and a heart to listen. Thank him because he has made your heart a fertile ground. Thank you, Lord Jesus, because you have made, you have pre prepared our heart as fertile grounds to receive your word. Thank him for the planting of the word that has been done. Thank you because you have planted your word in our hearts, Lord. Thank you because going forward, it will begin to germinate. We receive the grace to continually water it. It will not dry up. These seeds that have been planted, that have been up in us, will not, will, they will not die. They will not die. This, this meeting will not be in vain in the name of Jesus. Just thank him. Thank him, Lord. Thank you for questions answered. Thank you for heart cries heard. Thank you for the shift into the new phase, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because you've answered. For in Jesus' mighty name, we can we ask God for the grace, the grace to put this into effect. Everything we've heard. Our minister says, no one who gives himself to the word of the Lord ends up as a non-entity and as a disappointment. And another you know word hit me, ends up as a, that, that word non-entity is two words in one, non-entity. And entity is, is matter, it means you exist, you, you are, right? Non-entity means that you are nothing. So anyone who gives himself studiously and diligently to the word of the Lord in prayer, you cannot end up as nothing. You can't. It's not possible. It's not possible. The Lord, going forward, going forward from this night, not tomorrow, not next tomorrow, not when the week starts on Monday, but from this night, this Saturday, the 18th of March, 2023, that Lord will receive the grace to give ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. We receive the grace to commit the entirety of our beings, spirit, soul, and body to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Lord, we receive the engracing. We receive the enablement, the supernatural drive and help to consistently and constantly from this moment forward give ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Lord, we receive this grace now in the mighty name of Jesus. Ibrados katsuza likado sheket e ragrogo zosta branda lika zoto yoshkata i satala gazi katoshke zika dala brado sata i kateke teke labroso kotoshata. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Lastly, as we round up, can we pray that Lord, Lord, preserve my consecration, preserve my consecration. I I perceive that a lot of us. I'm just stepped into a season of consecration, a new season of consecration upon your life, upon your calling, upon my life, upon my calling. And they are, they are, they are, they are, they are, what, what I don't know the word to use now. They are thieves, they are, they are, they are, they are drainers, they are, they are, they are stealers of consecration. They are, con they, are they are work, they are only soul duty is to look for people that believe as that God has called into a season of consecration and either distract them or 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 or, or distract them or, or or just contaminate that consecration such that the whole process is aborted and you have to start over and thereby you are losing time you are with you are human beings we we we, we, we are entities of time right and if you cannot make impact in time then what have we been created for so i perceive that in this season a lot of us have been called in to a space, a time of consecration upon our lives. Lord, preserve my consecration. Preserve my consecration. Father, preserve my consecration. I will not be distracted. I will not be distracted. Lord Jesus, preserve my consecration. Preserve me. Preserve me. If it takes you to isolate me, if it takes you to, 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 to take me away from that which I love so much, Father, whatever it will cost, to preserve my consecration, Lord Jesus, do it. Whatever it will cost me, whatever it will cost you, my friends, whatever it is that I'm, I'm, I'm currently attached to and I'm vested in, Lord, whatever it will take to preserve my consecration, Lord Jesus, do it. Do it, Lord. 
say I'm a little push okay like go so push thank you Lord Jesus thank you Father thank you Father thank you Father because we have faith that he has heard us Father Lord we thank you once again we give you all the glory accept our thanks in the name of Jesus we know that there is no prayer that is a waste because it has come from a sincere heart it has come from sincere heart tonight Lord thank you Lord because you answered for Jesus let me pray I want to especially thank for Peter Labi. Thank you so much, sir. I know today was a, quite a busy day for you. God bless you. Thank you so much for carving out the time, the sacrifice of energy, for committing to be here tonight, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. God bless you. For everyone that made it a point of duty to be here, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And until we meet next, next week, Saturday, Next week, Saturday, and um, what date would that be? Don't worry, it will be communicated on our platform. If you are not yet on the group, we have a general platform for um, the book review, the editorial book review community. It will be good that you join. If you are not there, I believe a number of us have my contact. You can chat me up privately. You can chat up Bro Peter. You can chat up um, Ola Midi Ola Doja just to get the link to join so that we can send except because after each review we send excerpts of every review to the page where we can go back to see some words that you know words that hit us during that session that can stay with us even as we wait till the next book review session so once again thank you so much everybody god bless you till we meet next week saturday have an amazing night god bless